Okay, get ready. It's time to start the show. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. That's a direct order. Do it now. He's been put down, ripped off, cut open. Now, he's unleashed. Unleashed. The American insurgency starts now. This is Rusty Humphreys Rebellion Radio. It is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. How are you, my friend? My name is Rusty Humphreys, and this is the rebellion that I hope you join me for. And it is time we start fighting back because these idiots... On the left, we got idiots. I got idiots on the left of me, idiots on the right of me, and it is, it's it's enough. We are being uh, powered by Right Wing News, brought to you tonight by our good friends at Wax RX, brought to you by our great friends at AustralianDream.com, and another great friend, the uh, Dermond Moisturizing Cream. All great products, and I hope you will uh, go and support those products they're putting their money where their mouth is and we need them and we need you okay Uh, i'm watching online today and oh by the way yes check in would you please please check in let me know who you are where you're coming from give us some thumbs up give us some hearts give us some loves and make sure you share the video pamela says i was called a cracker today by a lefty you cracker you're a cracker are you more of a Ritz or a saltine, Pamela? Lyndon says, Rusty, good evening, dude. Another Pam. Hello, Rusty. Pittsburgh. Christopher said, people should grow up and get over themselves. These monuments were in place before many of these people were born. Before, I would say before most of these people were born. These groups, BLM, KKK, white supremacists, anarchists, etc., are nothing but a cult of domestic terrorist groups. The freedom of speech and freedom to demonstrate comes with consequences when you take it too far. If you take it too far, you get what you deserve. Don says Fox News looks like they're liberals now. Danielle says, uh, wants a spanking. Oh, Danielle is a saltine. Okay. (laughs) Bonnie's from Oregon. Um, uh, Barbara's coming in from uh, Lake Village, Arkansas. Charles says, these were not protesters. Protesters don't show up armed and ready for combat. I love it when a minority of the people speak for the majority of the country and the press just paints everyone with the same. Charles thinks the media is going to cause the next civil war. I uh, I hope you're wrong. Donald checking in. What's up, dog? I don't know. Sup, dog, would you? Okay, uh, let me just go through some of the videos, some of the things that I've found today. And I'm just... I'm just embarrassed. Uh, you know, the, I, I have such a great love for our country, and I have a great love for history. And, you know, these people that have never spent a minute in the South, but they know better. Oh, that's just a bunch of racist stuff. You know, again, I, yeah, I've lived in the South. I was actually born at Fort Benning, Georgia. Lived in Atlanta a number of times. I've lived in Texas. I've lived where else in the South? I don't remember. I've lived all over the place. I'm not a guy that runs around carrying the Confederate flag, but I also don't think that we should ban the General Lee, the car from the Dukes of Hazard, because them Duke boys had a had a flag on top of the car. Bruce is checking in from Chicago where he says black where black lives matter, but nobody else's does. And that's the problem I'm having. We're living in a country where nobody's opinion matters except those on the left. They'll yell more, they'll fight more, they'll spend more, they'll lie more, they'll argue more. Now again, these KKK guys, I... I, (laughs) I I don't support them in any way, shape, or form. But this whole thing that the media is trying to paint the alt-right, and what they're trying to suggest is the alt-right now is the new Tea Party. Yeah, it's the same Tea Party guys. They just finally came out and said they're racist. 
I don't know who, I don't know the alt-right. I don't know who they are. I've never met anybody that says what the, the alt-right. And then when I see people who are on TV or something and they claim they're the alt-right and then they say something that's racist, I have a hard time believing them. It just seems put on. It seems like it's a false story. It seems like there's a lot of people trying to make conservatives look really, really bad. And I got a real problem with that, as should you. I'm going to get knocked off the air here. Quit calling me, people. <laughs> Sorry. What is this? Okay. Sorry. Don't know why I got that happened. I'm just going to go in airplane mode. It happens. I apologize. Do me a favor, though, if you would. Have you checked in yet? Let's see. Rod says, did you see today that Hennepin County, Minnesota is flying the Antifa flag now? Please tell me you're lying. Please tell me you just made that up. I did not see that. Karen's in Phoenix, Donald, Kansas City. Daniel's checking in. Hello, Daniel. Uh, Joseph's in Missouri. Steve is in St. John, Indiana. Waylon Jemmings from Cartersville, Georgia. Bill is in New York City, the land of the freakazoids, he has, says. David is in Indiana, deplorable. Cindy says, watch you from Oklahoma. Hi, Cindy. Um... Brenda's in Florida. Laverne's in Livermore, California. Greg's in South Carolina. Uh, Anna, hi, Ed, from Gilmer, Texas. David is in Georgia. Russell is in Middle Tennessee. Angela in Central Ohio. Anita in California. And uh, the list goes on and on. Annette's in North Carolina. Lisa, Boston. You guys are all great. Thank you. Fort Mill, uh, South Carolina is where Bonnie is. Daisy's in Louisiana. All right, let me get to work. Uh, Tony's in North Carolina. First of all, <clears throat> do me a favor. Would you please share this video? Because I'm going to point out, I'm going to show a lot of stupid people. And I don't know about you, but I am sick of stupid people. I am sick of people who uh, don't want to listen. I am sick of people who don't want to have an intelligent conversation. What I can't stand is just somebody going, yap, 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 yap. They're either talking or waiting to talk. They don't want to have an intellectual dialogue. They just want to say what they want to say, and that's it. Randy's already shared it. Thank you, Randy. Lillian, amen. Morell, North Carolina deplorable. David's agreeing. Tony's in Lyman, South Carolina. Okay, so I found some videos I want to share with you from today. This first one is in front. I'm guessing it's that, um, where was the, in Virginia. And it's, it's where all the rioting took place over the weekend. And there's a guy who, I'm going to show you to you here. He, um, if you look at him, he's got an old Civil War outfit on. And he's saluting in the Confederate salute. He's saluting General um, Robert E. Lee. And he's just standing there. Now, is he kind of an idiot, if you ask me? Yeah, kind of. But if you take a look at what he's doing, he's just standing there. He's not saying a word. He's just saluting. Now, you can, you can disagree with what he's saying, but look at how the children on the left react. And that's all we're dealing with here. Oh, well, these are college adults. No, they're college children. I'm surprised they don't have milk and cookie hour. And, I, and I'll bet you that's coming now that I've come up with it. We don't have milk and cookie hour. And that's not fair. I am so sick and tired of these children in colleges being treated like adults when they aren't acting like adults. We actually pay attention to these people. Why? I can't imagine. So take a watch. It's only This one's only a couple seconds long. And see how these children behave with somebody that they disagree with. Here we go. Racist go home. 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 Okay, I racist go home. I get an I get an idea of what she has to say, which is not a lot. And Again, 
Now, he said he believed that that guy told the press that he believes that Robert E. Lee is the greatest American that ever lived. I probably wouldn't say that. He was a great general, and let's not forget Robert E. Lee was a general for the North, too. But he's just standing there. He's just standing there. He's saluting an inanimate object. He's not sitting up there going, I don't like black people. You black people go away. He didn't say that. I don't like me, no Mexicans. You go. He's not saying that. I hate Muslims. Nothing. He's just standing there. And for them, that's too much. And she's just sitting around. Racists go home. Racists go. And, and by the way, Look at the hate on her face. If you're watching on the pod, listening to the podcast, you can't see it. But there's just nothing but utter hate in this woman's face. Take a look. Watch this. Racist go home. 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 I mean, am I right? She's just look at look at that face. Just nothing but utterly full of hate. Um, Clint uh, was, was uh, pointing out it's true uh, that uh, Robert E. Lee was offered command over the entire Northern armies. That's right. He was going to, had, had Virginia not gotten into the Civil War, he would have been the general for the North. But he felt like he should fight for his state and for his people. Wayne says these fools are just brainwashed by the liberal professors at our universities. Yeah. Marjorie checking in. Hey, Marjorie, how you doing? Donald says it's his right to stand there. If she can't handle it, maybe she needs to go home. She doesn't need to be there. All she had to do was keep on walking. That's right. But there's more today. Outside of a, outside of, of Trump Tower was a protest. And the first thing I want to point out is this sign that is right up in front. Now, Again, if you're listening on the podcast, I'll try to describe it. The word no is there very clearly. It's in the rainbow flag colors, the the gay flag colors. And then it's got a black background and then a yellow in yellow, drive out Trump, Pence regime, refuse fascism.org. Now, why I want to point this picture out is because I've been to a number of these protests and reported on them and i started seeing signs similar to this not with the the gay flag but with the yellow and always at the bottom always 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 at the bottom they have in yellow with the red background you'd think they'd change the the signs up a little bit but they don't now why is this important because these signs are made by and i'm not making this up this is true They're made by the Communist Party of America. The first time I saw it was when, during George Bush's administration, and I was in Orlando, and I went to a illegal immigrant rally, and I started, I saw these signs all over the place. And and they said Communist Party USA on them. Be interesting. Let's. I wonder if we can see. Here, let me take a quick look here. What if I go to refusefascism.org and see what comes up? See if there's any kind of communist thing in there. Refuse fascism. Uh, I had it too. Fascism.org. I've, I should have prepared myself, but I didn't. Okay, it wants to update my file. My No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I do not trust this site one bit. All right, it's downloading stuff. Sorry, I ain't going there. See how creepy they are? But I'm telling you, I'm not making that up. That is a, a sign paid for by the Communist Party. Now, I'm guessing they're getting George Soros money, but I don't know that for a fact. But let's just take a look at what happened outside of Trump Tower today. Here we go. Okay, there, 
they always they always have to have a rhyme. They're very good. I'll give this to the left. They're very good rhymers. They're very good rhymers. They must have studied Dr. Seuss very well. I want you to if if and if you're listening, you can't see these people are just it's just filled with hate. You know, they call us on the right haters. I I don't hate these people. I'm embarrassed by them. I know they're wrong. But again, they're going to say the same chant over and over again. But I want you to look at at their faces. And and first of all, here's a fun game. As you're looking at the people, I want you to play it in your head. How long has it been since that lady, that dude, or that girl had a shower? Just checking. <laughs> All right, let's let's we'll watch a little bit more of this video. USA, no Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA, no Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. Okay, look at the sign in the back there. Notice, okay, the refusefascism.org sign in the back. Okay. It's, uh, it's in black, but again, it's the same shape. It's the same size. RefuseFascism.org is at the bottom. I'm telling you, this is an organized event that was paid for by the Communist Party or somebody that's funding the Communist Party. And we don't talk about communists anymore. Hell, they don't even talk about the lefts anymore. This is... There's something to this, and I am not in any way, shape, or form a conspiracy theorist. I'm not. I don't think people are smart enough to pull off conspiracies, especially in the government. But there's something going on that stinks to high heaven here. Chris says they want to eliminate history. What will they do next to remove the Holocaust Memorial in Boston? Lyndon says Nelson Mandela was a big-time communist. He was. Marjorie says, everything's a mess. This whole monument issue is because the money train isn't funding sanctuary cities. Regina says, I don't hate him either. I just think they're brainwashed. Debbie says, I suggest that they don't like the country, our president that we elected, what we stand for. They can feel free to move to another country they think's better. Nobody's stopping them. Very interesting that you make that point, Debbie, because I want to play you another video I saw that really bothered me today. I don't know who this person is. Some young girl. Now, one thing we do know, and we and I point this out almost every day on the show, when it is the left, they cannot go very long without profanity. Just they just have to. It's the only way they know how to get their point across. I said I don't mind a good swear word every once in a while, but it's interesting how. On a political point of view, it's just always, they always got to swear. So I, I'm going to give you a warning. This girl does swear. But I got to be honest, that's not what bothers me in this video. I wish the only thing that bothered me was her swearing. Don't tune this. As a matter of fact, share this video right now. Share it right now. Give me some emojis too. But this is something everybody needs to see. You're not going to like it. But you need to see it. Have you shared yet? Have you emojied me? Here we go. It's only a minute 30. So when you think you can't take it anymore, just stick around. And then I'll tell you about my book. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So um, this flag represents slavery and genocide, and that's not what it's supposed to represent. Okay, by the way, if you're listening on the podcast... She is holding an American flag and has, is saying that this flag represents slavery and genocide. Um, can I, can, yeah, I don't know what your name is, honey, but you are a complete dumbass. To say that you believe the American flag stands for uh, slavery and genocide means you are so uninformed, so uneducated, so brainwashed, so freaking stupid. You shouldn't even be able to touch that flag. But wait until this idiot, wait till you see what she does. And I hope she's arrested for this. I do. I hope she's arrested. This is not freedom of speech. Yeah. 
So um, this flag represents slavery and genocide, and that's not what it's supposed to represent. It's supposed to represent freedom and justice for all. But um, in my experience living in this country and lots of other people's experiences, um, it's, it's not that at all. And for this, for that reason, I'm gonna burn this because uh, fuck America, fuck everyone that that voted for Donald Trump, and fuck everyone who's silent about racism. Um, no, honey. Um, uh, blank you. Seriously, blank you. You piece of garbage. I'm just, I'm just sickened. But I'm going to play the whole thing because I want you to see it. I do. I want, I want you to see how far she's willing to go. How stupid and evil this little B-I-T-C whatever is. I'm, believe, me, I'm, believe me, I'm holding it back, okay? I'm holding it back. If you're watching on, listening to us on the podcast, she is now burning the flag. Oh, and she's smiling. Look at her smile. She thinks she's so cute. She thinks she's so damn cute. You hag. Nice tattoo on your foot. That's going to look real good when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s. Can't wait to see that. Grandma, why'd you get a tattoo on your foot? Heather thinks she should move to North Korea. Michael says, uh, maybe we should start the draft again and see how they like it. Cheryl thinks she's on drugs. Pamela says, she just said F you to every soldier that fought for her freedom as America. Yep. And boy, does she look like she is something important, doesn't she? She looks like she is something cool. Laverne says she's so pathetic. My dad fought for that flag. And it covered his casket. Lord have mercy. Yeah, I've got my dad's flag here too. I kept it in here. I'm keeping my dad's flag in here. The flag that covered his coffin when he came home after he was killed in Vietnam. Marla says my son is serving right now for this POS to burn a flag. Yeah. Darren says she's doing it in her mom and dad's backyard. Here's my question. And I am a parent. I've got two daughters. One's 22, almost 23, and one is 16, almost 17. And it's just the same as that woman who was, if you're just joining us, there was a woman that, um, I'll show this again, who is was just yelling in some guy's face because she didn't agree with him. Um. This, this chick, too. All right? Racist, go home. Racist, go home. Racist, go home. Okay. Racist, go home. She's really boring to me. But here's the question. How freaking entitled do you have to be to think that everything has to be your way? I mean, weren't they ever told growing up, hey, the world's not fair. You don't get to have your way all the time. No, these kids, it appears, they've been told that they get to have their way all the time. I guess the whole thing with the trophies and you're, and you're something special for everybody worked. Patty says, bless our military and vets. We thank you. Dennis says, need to mow the lawn and feed her dog instead of burning the flag. <laughs> Why do you think kids are so entitled today? I know there's some good kids. There's a lot of good kids. But right now we have what appears to be the most spoiled, weak, childish, self-absorbed, self-important group of people I have ever seen in my life. 
David says, my son is a Marine and my granddad lost his hearing in the Army from artillery grounds. How dare you, ladies? Sheen says, uh, Sean says, because most are spoiled. Okay, but why is this generation so spoiled more than others? What happened? What have we done wrong? I got another video I want to show you. Where did it go? Um, the amount of people in this country that think they just, they just know it all and that everything has to revolve around what they want. It's just, it's heartbreaking to me. Mike says it takes two parents to pay for a home. JD says, got took away, it's got stopped spanking. Parents weren't being parents. Ken says because they were given everything they had uh, wanted to be given, they uh, didn't have to earn anything. I saw another one. Is this it? Where is There's another one I saw. Of an, oh, that's not it. Ah, oh, shoot. Anyway, I saw another spoiled little brat like that girl. And... America is not the land of opportunity. America is not this. America is not that. Okay, well, where do you think you can go where it will be better? If you, and we always have trolls on this. So I would like to know from you trolls, you people on the left, where is better? Sweden, so those, those countries aren't any better. Canada, they get free health care. You know, I talk to, I have a lot of friends that live in Canada. Better pray that you don't have cancer or that you have to get in a, into a, the hospital now. Let's see. Mary thinks George Soros is the bully and the problem. Claudia says, love you, Rusty. You tell it like it is. Thank you, Claudia. David says, I'm not willing to put my hands on a female, but I spent 68, 69, and 70 in Nam. But looking in this, I'd like to put my foot in her behind. Yeah, the problem, the big problem right now is you cannot discipline children. I can't imagine when I was a kid. Oh, okay. First of all, I can't imagine when I was a kid or in college going up to an adult and yelling in their face. I can't imagine it. I was a practical joker when I was a kid. Huh, what a shock. I can tell this story now because the the guy passed away about six months ago, so I can tell this story. My, my, my dad was really into old cars, classic cars, 50s cars, 60s cars, and he was really, really good at Rebuilding them. Now, let me clear up when I, because you just heard me say that my, my father was killed. My father was Gary Humphreys, and he was killed in Vietnam. My dad, Mike, is still around. He was in the hospital, um, had bladder cancer this past week, but it looks like they got everything, so that's good. So I sometimes confuse people because I'll say my dad, and but my father, that's how I distinguish it. Anyway, so my dad, Mike, was um, in doing old cars. And they used to have these things called rod runs. And every weekend, we would take one of our classic cars and a tent, and the kids, we basically had to sit around and do nothing while the adults went around and looked at old cars for, all, for the whole weekend. I used to hate them, but I probably would like them now. And I'll never forget, I went to a magic store before a rod run once. And I saw something that was the most magical thing I'd ever seen. I looked at the shelf, and it was as if angels were singing to me. La! A thing called stink perfume. Yes, stink perfume. And right next to it, a whoopee cushion. Now, I had to have been maybe 10. (laughs) 
So I had this brilliant idea. I was going to bring the stink perfume and the whoopee cushion to the rod run. So all the adults are sitting around the campfire. And I would, <laughs> and I would take the stink perfume and do a couple of drops behind an adult. And, and then hit the, and then wait a few seconds and then hit the whoopee cushion. <laughs> I thought it was the funniest thing ever. Well, there was a friend of ours named Gordon, and Gordon was really, really rich. Um, Gordon owned like 50 or 60 Shakey's Pizza Parlors. If you remember, you remember Shakey's? He was the president of like all of the restaurants on the West Coast from California up to Alaska or something like that. Really wealthy guy. Anyway, I did the stink perfume to him, and I went behind him, a couple of drops, <laughs> whoopee cushion. And he got so pissed off, excuse my language. He picked me up, got the whole bottle of stink perfume and poured it all over me until I uh, learned my lesson. Now, do I, am I glad that he did that? No. Was it one of my favorite things in the world? No. Does it still bother me a little bit? Yeah. I promise I never played with stink perfume again. I learned my lesson. Parents used to help parents that way. You used to be able to tell kids no. And today it's all, well, we better call the police and get the police in here. And then there's no way to discuss things or argue or whatever. Let's see. Mary says, unfortunately, she has the right to say that, but she is so wrong and so bigoted and biased herself. Supreme Court also gave her the right to burn the flag, but those of us who know better have respect for what that represents and would never act that way. Um, I, I, see, I, was, I disagreed with that. that. That is not speech to me. She put that in, we're talking about the burning of the flag. She took that into the realm of the physical. She could say, in my opinion, she could say all she wants. I'm going to burn this flag. But when she took the lighter and put the lighter to that flag, to that, to that sacred symbol of America, to me, that was where she broke the law. That's me. By the way, if these people drive you crazy, you've got ones in your family, do me a favor, would you please? Do yourself a favor. Get the new book. Seven ways to win political debates with your liberal family and friends and still keep them as family and friends. It's a fun book. It's an interesting book. You know, it's and it's funny all the way through, even the very beginning, even in the disclaimer, the part that nobody reads, it's full of entertainment. The author and publisher shall not be liable for your misuse of this material. This book is intended for use by conservatives only and is to be used for the purpose of good, not evil. This book is for strictly informational and educational purposes. Disclaimer. The views expressed are those of the author, and they are correct. Anyone who disagrees with the author is wrong. Personal stories told by the author are almost 100% accurate and truthful. And it goes on. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a fun book. And, and, and by the way, I lowered the price. I think the paperback, and I'm, and I'm putting it back up September 1st. This is my birthday month. My birthday is at the end of the month, and I figured I'd give you the presents. So I'm literally making like a quarter on this book if you buy it right now. Literally about 25 cents. Because I've lowered the price so much because it's so important that this information get out. Not only are you going to laugh, not only are you going to have a good time, but you're going to learn important debate techniques that the liberals will not know what happened when you come and beat them like rented mules. I'll also teach you how to get through a party or a family gathering without it being ruined by you. And it's easy to fall into their traps. I'm going to teach you the traps. I'm going to teach you what to look out for. It's not my birthday yet, guys. William and Patty, thank you. It's not my birthday yet. It's uh, not until August 29th. 
but do me a favor. This would be my a great Christmas, a great birthday present for me if you'd go buy this book now. Get it while it's cheap. I am going to raise the price. Right now, you can get it in paperback, ebook, or Kindle version, and the Audible version, which is me reading the book to you. And I kind of like that one the best. So, if you would please get this book, Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with your liberal family and friends, and still keep them as family and friends, I would appreciate it. All right. Let's see what else I found. Okay, uh, President Trump did give some uh, talking today. Uh, He gave a pretty good speech. I'm going to play a bit of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I do, if you missed it, like it was early in the day, a lot of people didn't get a chance to watch it, but President Trump talked a little bit about infrastructure. He's fulfilling promises. And then some of the things that he said that ticked off the left, nothing is good enough for them. Let's play a little bit of it here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. Because they're not taking their job seriously as it pertains to this country. We want jobs, manufacturing in this country. If you look at some of those people that you're talking about, they're outside of the country. They're having uh, a lot of their product made outside. If you look at Merck as an example, Take a look where, excuse me, excuse me. Take a look at where their product is made. It's made outside of our country. We want products made in the country. Now, I have to tell you, some of the folks that will leave, they're leaving out of embarrassment because they make their products outside. And I've been lecturing them, including the gentleman that you're referring to, about you have to bring it back to this country. You can't do it necessarily in England and all of these other places. You have to bring this work back to this country. That's what I want. I want manufacturing to be back into the United States so that American workers can benefit. Let me ask you a question. Why why did you wait so long? Why did not last long? I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I didn't wait long. I wanted to make sure, unlike most politicians, that what I said was correct, not make a quick statement. The statement I made on Saturday, the first statement, was a fine statement, but you don't make statements that direct unless you know the fact. It takes a little while to get the facts. You still don't know the facts. And it's a very, very uh, important process to me. And it's a very important statement. So I don't want to go quickly and just make a statement for the sake of making a political statement. I want to know the facts. If you go back to my, in fact, I brought it. I brought it. I brought it. What did you bring? As I said on, remember this, Saturday, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And then I went on from there. Now, here's the thing as to, excuse me, excuse me. Take it nice and easy. Here's the thing. When I make a statement, I like to be correct. I want the facts. This event just happened. In fact, a lot of the event didn't even happen yet as we were speaking. This event just happened. Before I make a statement, I need the facts. So I don't want to rush into a statement. So making the statement when I made it was excellent. In fact, the young woman who I hear is a fantastic young woman, and it was on NBC, her mother wrote me and said through, I guess, Twitter, social media, the nicest things, and I very much appreciated that. I hear she was a fine, really actually an incredible young woman, but her mother on Twitter thanked me for what I said. And honestly, if the press were not fake, and if it was honest, the press would have said what I said was very nice. But unlike you and unlike, excuse me, unlike you and unlike the media, before I make a statement, I like to know the facts. They don't. They don't. They don't. Listen, how about how about a couple of how about a couple of infrastructure questions? Was that terrorism? Say it. What? critical opportunity to help bring the country together. Did you? Not at all. I think uh, the country. Look, you take a look. Uh, I've created over a million jobs since I'm president. The country is booming. The stock market is setting records. We have the highest employment numbers we've ever had in the history of our country. We're doing record business. We have the highest levels of enthusiasm. So the head of Walmart, who I know, who's a very nice guy, was making a political statement. I mean, I do it the same way. And you know why? Because I want to make sure when I make a statement 
that the statement is correct. And there was no way, there was no way of making a correct statement that early. I had to see the facts, unlike a lot of reporters. Unlike a lot of reporters, the Nazis were there. I didn't know David Duke was there. I wanted to see the facts. And the facts, as they started coming out, were very well stated. In fact, everybody said his statement was beautiful. If he would have made it sooner, that would have been good. I couldn't have made it sooner because I didn't know all of the facts. Frankly, people still don't know all of the facts. It was very important, excuse me, excuse me. It was very important to me to get the facts out and correctly. Because if I would have made a fast statement, and the first statement was made without knowing much other than what we were seeing. The second statement was made after, with knowledge, with great knowledge. There's still things, excuse me, there's still things that people don't know. I want to make a statement with knowledge. I wanted to know the facts. Okay. Was this Two questions. Was this terrorism? And can you tell us how you're feeling about your chief strategist? Well, I think the driver of the car is a disgrace to himself, his family, and this country. And that is, you can call it terrorism. You can call it murder. You can call it whatever you want. I would just call it as the fastest one to come up with a good verdict. That's what I'd call it. Because there is a question. Is it murder? Is it terrorism? And then you get into legal semantics. The driver of the car is a murderer. And what he did was a horrible, horrible, inexcusable thing. Can you, you tell us how you're feeling you about your chief strategist, Mr. Bannon? Can you Go talk ahead. about that? I, I would echo Maggie's question. Uh, Steve Bannon is I never spoke to Mr. Bannon about it. Can you tell us broadly what your uh, Do you have, still have confidence well, in Well, we'll see. And look, look. I like Mr. Bannon. He's a friend of mine. But Mr. Bannon came on very late. You know that. I went through 17 senators, governors, and I won all the primaries. Mr. Bannon came on very much later than that. Uh, and I like him. He's a good man. Uh, he is not a racist. I can tell you that. He's a good person. He actually gets a very unfair press in that regard. But we'll see what happens with Mr. Bannon. But he's a good person, and I think the press treats him, frankly, very unfairly. You know, that's, that's a very interesting comment there. Um, I've known Steve Bannon for a long time. He is a good guy. But I sure did not hear the president right there saying, oh, Steve's job's fine. Y'all shut up. I did not hear that at all. So these rumors about Bannon may be in trouble, um, that's the first I've, I've heard that, and that could be uh, a concern for him. And by the way, Scaramucci, Scott, uh, Dice Scaramucci, remember, remember when I first saw that guy and I said on, on the show, uh, this guy's a loser. He, looks, he reminds me of Andrew Dice Clay with his attitude. Anyway, what is, why is his first two interviews, now that he's um, a private citizen after a week and a half in the, in the White House, his first two interviews are George Snuffleupagus and Stephen Colbert. Does that tell you a little something about this guy? I told, This guy's a sellout. All he wanted, he, all the only reason why Scaramucci uh, worked for, the, for Trump, it wasn't because he loved Trump. It wasn't even because he loved the country. It was because he wanted to get himself more famous. That's all it was. I have no doubt about that at all. Let me go back and play a little bit more of this press conference. Are you liking how the president is handling these things? You think he's doing a good job? And again, I also find it absolutely unbelievable. He says, you know, the Klan is bad, but Antifa is bad too. And they go, how dare you equate the Klan with Antifa? No, you absolutely need to equate the Klan with Antifa. By the way, how many Klansmen have you ever met in your life? Never. I mean, Robert Byrd, the guy who's got his name on more buildings than any other politician in the country, as I understand. He, now, I know he was in the Klan. I know that Hillary Clinton cried like a baby when he died. But I don't know any Klansmen. Now, how about these Occupy Wall Street Antifa little crybabies? Met a lot of them. They're proud. So let's talk about percentages of people who are in the Klan, which is infinitesimal. I know no one that supports them. Nobody. Antifa, a growing movement of idiots, 
anarchists and and, uh, um, American terrorists. And the media doesn't want to touch them. They're okay. I, I, I still can't believe that the media is treating Antifa like they didn't do, they didn't cause any problems. They didn't they didn't do anything wrong. It was just them racists. No, Antifa is a bunch. There's a bunch of racists too. Those people on the left, they hate everybody. They don't like anybody. They hate everybody. They're just nothing but hate lovers. The head of regime has called on you to defend your national security advisor, H.R. McMaster, against the Hamas attacks. I did it the last time. And he called on it again, linking the Senator team McCain. to the old. Right, Senator McCain, he's, you mean the one yes. who voted against uh, Obamacare? And he said, <laughs> Senator, you mean Senator McCain who voted against Senator, us getting good health care? Senator McCain yeah. said good. that the alt right is behind these attacks, and he linked. Hey. John McCain is so full of crap. John McCain, I'll say it again. John McCain is so full of crap. I don't know anybody in the alt right. Now, they, they want to accuse Milo Yiannopoulos of being in the alt-right. Um, I've talked to him. I've never seen him or heard him say anything uh, anti-black, uh, anti-Hispanic, uh, anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic. Oh, but he's alt-right. The only thing I can see in the alt-right that might actually have something is that they are more apt to do some of the stronger tactics against the left than maybe the Tea Party people would. They're a little bit younger. They are a little bit more... Oh, what's the word? Aggressive, maybe. Um, more... I don't know. There's another word I'm looking for. Into it. They really believe they can change America, and I hope they can. But I've never heard them say racist things. I know a lot of people that have been accused of being alt-right who are Jewish. So you're an anti-Semite who's Jewish. By the way, oh, that's the other thing. Oh, Breitbart is is an anti-Semite website. Guys, Andrew Breitbart was Jewish. His former partner, who's now running Breitbart, it's not Steve Bannon, it's a guy named Larry. I believe Larry's Jewish. They got a lot of Jewish guys that work there. They're not anti-Semitic. They just make this crap up because people don't want to do any research and they believe it. Let me keep going here. More on the Trump press conference. That same group to those who perpetrated the attack in Charlottesville. Well, I I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm sure Senator McCain must know what he's talking about. Uh, But when you say the alt-right... Uh, define alt right to me. You define there you it. Go. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, no, Senator, define it for me. Come on, let's go. Define Senator it for McCain defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt left that came day. charging at? Excuse me. What about the alt left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is Senator 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 what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any? Problem? I think they do. So as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. I love it. I love it. He's doing great. And by the way, he's 100% right. He's 100% right. Those people, those Antifa, those lefty people, those alt-left people, they came looking for a fight. They came looking for trouble. They came to destroy property and hurt people. They did it on purpose. I don't know how many of them were paid, but these people came looking for a fight, and they do need to be held accountable. Very well said, Mr. President. Let's get back to his press conference, shall we? It was a horrible day. I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but Good I'll say you. it right now. Good for you, you Mr. Group, President. You had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Go ahead. What you call the alt-left is the same as neo-Nazis? Yes! I, oh, those people, all of those people, excuse me, I've condemned neo-Nazis. I've condemned many different groups. 
But not all of those people were neo-Nazis, believe me. Not all of those people were white supremacists by any stretch. Those people were also oh, there. Did you hold on? Did you, hold on. Did you hear what she just said? Well, then what nationality are they? Oh, so just because a couple of the guys were white guys, they have to be white supremacists. And by the way, black power is okay. Gay pride is okay. Black pride, black lives matter. But if you say you're proud of being white, I mean, they want to put you in prison. Now, see, here's the difference with me. I'm not proud of my color. I can't control it. You know, it's like in other countries, if your father was a, if your great grandfather was a doorman at a hotel, your grandfather was a doorman at the same hotel, your father was a doorman at the same hotel, and you're going to be the doorman at the hotel or a factory worker or whatever. We have caste systems in India and other places around the world where you are in your lot in life and that's it. There's nothing you can do. I don't have pride in my sexuality. I don't have pride in my skin color. I have pride in my accomplishments. What have I done to make the country a better place? What have I done to make the world a better place? How have I succeeded? How have I overcome adversity? How have I overcome some of these a-holes on the left? who've gotten in my way year after year? How have I overcome uh, Barack Obama's government who came after me personally? You've overcome things. I've overcome things. That's what I'm proud of. I'm not proud of the color of my skin or my sexual preference or even my religion. What say you? Comment, would you please? I'll read your comments as President Bush continues. President Bush, President Trump continues to talk. I want to read your comments. I want to know from you, what are you proud of? And make sure you share the video. Share the video. Please share the video. Here we go. And if you're listening to the podcast, share the podcast, please. Test the taking down of a statue, Robert E. Lee. So, excuse me. And you take a look at some of the groups and you see... And you know it if you were honest reporters, which in many cases you're not. Ah. But many of those people were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. So this week it's Robert E. Lee. I noticed that Stonewall Jackson's coming down. I wonder, is it George Washington next week? And is it Thomas Jefferson the week after? You know, you, all, you really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Yes. But they were there to protest, excuse me. You take a look the night before. And by the way, uh, did you see that somebody spray painted on the Lincoln Memorial? Uh, spray painted the F word in red paint on the Lincoln Memorial. They have no respect for this country. None. So President Trump is right. Where is this going to stop? And at this point, it doesn't look like the left is going to stop anywhere. They were there to protest the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. Infrastructure question. Go ahead. Should the statue of Robert E. Lee stay up? Ah. I would say that's up to a local town, community, or the federal government, depending on where it is located. Are you against the Confederacy? Wow, what a whole question. Do you think things have gotten worse or better since you took office? I think they've gotten better or the same. I look, they've been frayed for a long time. And you can ask President Obama about that because he'd make speeches about it. But I believe that the fact that I brought in, it will be soon, millions of jobs. You see where companies are moving back into our country. I think that's going to have a tremendous positive impact on race relations. We have companies coming back into our country. We have two car companies that just announced. We have Foxconn in Wisconsin just announced. We have many companies, I say pouring back into the country. I think that's going to have a huge positive impact on race relations. You know why? It's jobs. What people want now, they want jobs. They want great jobs with good pay. And when they have that, you watch how race relations will be. And I'll tell you, we're spending a lot of money on the inner cities. We're going to fix, we're fixing the inner cities. We're doing far more than anybody's done with respect to the inner cities. It's a priority for me. And it's very important. What are you doing, Mr. President? Are you putting what you're calling the alt-left and 
white supremacists on the same moral plane. Yes! I'm not putting anybody on a moral plane. What yes. I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible and it was a horrible thing to watch. But there is another side. There was a group on this side, you can call them the left, you've just called them the left, that came violently attacking the other group. So you can say what you want, but that's the way it is. On both sides, sir, you said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Are well, I do think there's blame, yes. I think there's blame on both sides. You look at, you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. And, only and, and, hold, hold on, he's, and he's right. How can these people in the media suggest that the that Antifa guys didn't do anything wrong? They were spitting on people. They were throwing water balloons full of urine. They were throwing tear gas containers at cops. They were throwing Coke cans filled with a cement, I heard. I mean, how can you say that they weren't uh, g causing trouble? How can you say that they weren't uh, equivalent to the KKK? The KKK is evil, but I don't know anybody in it. Antifa is evil. They hate everybody that doesn't agree with them. And hell, they don't even agree with themselves. This is unbelievable. All right, I'm going to play a little bit more of this, then I'm going to end the broadcast. But let me uh, let play a little bit more of uh, President Trump. And if you reported it accurately, you would say. They showed up in Charlottesville. Excuse me. To protest Excuse me. They didn't put themselves down as you. And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Washington. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly yep. now in the other group also you had some fine people but you also had troublemakers and you see them come with the with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats you got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Unfairly, sir. I'm sorry, I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No. I just didn't oh, understand what you were saying. Oh come there on! There were people in that rally, and I looked. And <laughs> okay, hold on a second. You think you think uh, you're saying that the media says that they're treating the white nationalists? I'm. This is this is so wrong. This is such bad reporting. It is it is nothing but blatant propaganda. There's nobody asking real questions to the president of the United States. This is nothing but a bunch of whiny crybaby uh, phony journalists trying to get their name in the paper, trying to look cool to their friends. Yeah, did you see the one I asked him? I asked him if he thought that the white nationalists, if he thought they were being treated badly. It's, uh... You know, I love journalism. I am, I'm kind of a weird creature in this. Yes, I do a talk show where I give my opinion. But I can also turn it off and go report stories. And I take myself and my opinion out of it. And I tell you what happened. What I don't understand is, is what happened to that? Why is it that there aren't journalists anymore? There are some uh, fair questions to ask this president. Let's see. Let me think about it. what would I ask him if I was on the left? Um, that was a fair journalistic question. I mean, the truth is, I thought he's answered things pretty well. 
I condemn the KKK, but hey, Antifa, they've been causing trouble too. I watched the videos. They were violent. I mean, he's he's right. So I don't I don't get this hack job by the media. They just can't give it up. They just can't give it up. Glenn says the media is blind to themselves. They are the propaganda wing of the Democrat Party, the new Pravda. Yeah. Pam says no matter what he says, Rusty, he's not going to be right. CNN, MSNBC, they don't even belong on the air anymore because they are dangerous to the country. No, I do believe that they. we should hear all points of view. I want to hear from the left. I want to hear from the right. I want to hear more points of view. But I don't want my point of view shut down. And I don't want the people who are supposed to be telling us the truth lying to us. David says, a house divided against itself cannot stand. He says, I see this as America, the country that hundreds of thousands have put down their lives for, and I see things that are happening in the country that's just now sad. I wish I could fix this, but I can't. The only way this can be fixed is for all of us to work in peace, but again, that's not going to happen. So again, we arrive at being torn apart. So I leave you with this. The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. That's uh, Edmund Burke. Today's just a day I'm just embarrassed. Just embarrassed. Steve wants to know what the name of the, uh, the title of my book is. <laughs> it is Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with Your Liberal Family and Friends and still keep them as family and friends. Thanks, Steve. Steve's an old friend of mine. But let me play more of President Trump here as we wrap things up. Before, if you look, they were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people, neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. But there are two sides to the country. Does anybody have a final? Does anybody have, you have an infrastructure. What makes you think you can get an infrastructure bill? You didn't get health care. Well, you know, I'll tell you, we came very close with health care. Unfortunately, John McCain decided to vote against it at the last minute. You'll have to ask John McCain why he did that. But we came very close to health care. We will end up getting health care, but we'll get the infrastructure. And actually, infrastructure is something that I think we'll have bipartisan support on. I actually think, I I actually think Democrats will go along with the infrastructure. President, have you spoken to the family? Have you spoken to the family of the victim of the car? No, I'll be reaching out. I'll be reaching out. When will you be reaching out? I was very, I I thought that the statement put out, uh, the, the mother's statement I thought was a beautiful statement. I was telling you, it was, it was something that I really appreciated. I thought it was terrific and really under the, under the kind of, uh, stress that she's under and the heartache that she's under. I thought putting out that statement to me was really something I won't forget. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are going to have President uh, Trump giving a statement. He was supposed to talk about infrastructure and didn't get a chance to get much of that out there because the media didn't want to talk about it. All they want to do is cause trouble. All right. A um, couple things before we start uh, wrapping things up. Number one, can I please, 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 please tell you about a good product? It's called Wax RX. If you have earwax, and I do, and I hate it, it drives me nuts. It, uh, if it gets, you know, I don't know if you've ever never had it. If, you, if you've had it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't go to the doctor and get it cleaned out in the right time, I mean, you get dizzy, you lose balance, you can't hear anything. It's just awful. And Wax RX is a system that you can clean your ears at home with, with a system like doctors use. It's pH conditioned. It's an ear wash system that actually works. 
There's a lot of products out there. I believe me, I've tried so many of them because this has been a problem for me for most of my life. And Wax RX is really the only one I have found that works other than going to the doctor. And this will save you a lot of money. And there's three different, uh, three separate uses in here. So uh, it's good for uh, people age 12 and up. So go to WaxRx.com and find out more. It really is a good product. It really is. WaxRx.com. WaxRx.com. Get a system to clean your ears at home. Same kind of system your doctor uses. Okay? And they're a great company. And go and check that out if you would please. Okay, what else? Um, We're here every night, 9 p.m. in the east, 6 p.m. in the west. Want to thank our good friends at Right Wing News for powering the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. I want to thank Wax RX for sponsoring the show and Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream and Dermond Moisturizing Formulas, creams available at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. If you're a senior and your skin is not doing what it's supposed to be doing for you, Look into Dermen products. Dermen, D-E-R-M-E-N-D. They really are excellent, excellent products. And then, of course, my book, Seven Ways to Win Political Debates with Your Liberal Family and Friends and Still Keep Them as Family and Friends. Ed says, Rusty's book emphasizes strategic timing. That's true. I never thought of it that way, but you're right. What time time and what nights am I on? Jeremy, I'm on Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. in the east, 6 p.m. in the west, unless I'm busy and something else comes up. Okay? Thank you for asking. Keep checking, catching the end of the show. Well, get there earlier, man. You don't want to miss it. And if you do miss it, you can always catch the replay of the video. It stays here on the Facebook pages. I want to thank all the Facebook pages that carry Right Wing News, my Facebook page, Rusty Humphreys, our good friends over at Team Trump. Um, the I Support Baron Trump page carries this. Uh, We Love Our First Lady. Um, The Deplorables puts it up Come sometimes. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. That's it. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank God bless you. Oh, and and the podcast. The Rusty Embry's Rebellion podcast. It is available at iTunes and Stitcher. Any place great podcasts are. If you've got a cell phone, an iPhone, you could get it very simply by going to the to iTunes. Just look for Rusty Humphreys, type my name in, and you'll find it. And another great podcast is Blunt Force Truth, hosted by Chuck Woolery. Remember him from The Love Connection and Wheel of Fortune. And Mark Young, one of the smartest guys I know. And uh, it's a great show. Don't forget to like and share, 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 like and share. And buy my damn book. Go buy it while it's cheap, you cheap SO. Okay, that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out. May God bless you and may God bless America. My name is Rusty Humphreys. We'll see you tomorrow night right here on the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion. <laughs>